A lot of guys here in Kentucky just got here from Pennsylvania. Supposed to be flying home quickly and safely. Ken says, Derek, why don't you just take this Camaro that hasn't run in 27 years instead? We're talking 1993 fillers. This guy's crazy. So of course, naturally I said, yep, yeah, it's only 800 miles. So I actually just helped pick this car up out of a garage in Pennsylvania. So we were able to get a lot of history on it. It was parked in 93 uh, due to health reasons and unfortunately that gentleman's no longer with us. So it sat all this time and then the son didn't want to see it deteriorate anymore and wanted it to go to a good home. So Ken picked it up originally and then it looks like I'm going to end up with it. but. It's got some rust issues here and there, but overall it was really well kept. It's got 109,000 miles. Interior is in really good shape. I mean, it smells like laundry that was left in the washing machine for 14 years, but other than that, you could tell the guy kept really good care. I mean, it's still got the tag on the key. And he had a locking gas cap, had the rear seat folded down so the sun doesn't get to her. It's still got the factory spare and jacks in it. Pretty neat car. A little time capsule. Uh, the front wheels, when we took it out of the garage, were locked solid. They're frozen. So we actually had to use a come along and winch it out. So it's going to need a complete brake job. Rotors, calipers, pads, bearings, seals. And I kind of got a head start on this side. And you can see it was just... It was really nasty and these were just basically welded on spindle looks good hoping the brake line just you know if it just hangs in there for me we'll be okay um i did put a battery in it this morning and we shot some laughing gas down her because i didn't want to spend a couple days here and more money if it wasn't going to at least fire and you're not going to believe me but literally I went tsst, and Ken just breathed on the key and this thing fired off immediately. So I'm doing things a little bit different this time. I'm going to do the brake laters first because there's a really good chance it's going to run. But I don't know if it's going to overheat or if it's going to stay running. This has a Rochester E2, which is a two barrel with a bunch of alien science and stuff hooked onto it. It's got a mixture modulator control valve 9000. And an idle master modulator basically it was the beginning to the tbi stuff and i know nothing about any of this so that's good the rear end will just ignore any of that stuff no idea if the transmission works yet i have an appointment tomorrow at 1 30 to put new shoes on her and it's uh what is it about 1 30 right now the day before so i gotta hustle and I'm just, you know, these tires seem, they seem fine. They were all flat all the way to the rim. We put air in them and they're kind of holding air. So I'm just going to nurse it down to the tire store. I'm going to need some more lug nuts because they're just blowing in half and disintegrating from sitting. Uh, underneath, I mean, I'm used to Minnesota cars, so... This is not so bad at all. The main support, you know, down here, that's okay. Where the captain's feet go, that's pretty fine-ish. Uh, rocker panel, surprisingly pretty good. Under the doors are getting it. Underneath the car in the back. Um, she's getting a little, you know, there's some, I'll just put that back. And then I don't know if I got a brake line or if that's a shock blown out, but she's leaking there. Exhaust seems fine. So we got a pretty good start. I'm just, like I said, going to start with the brakes, get this thing rolling. 
um, because I've got about 500 bucks in it now with all of this stuff. The rest of this stuff came from rescuing the Chevelle. So I already have my tools and all that stuff. So now that I've got more than a plane ticket into it, I don't got a choice. I'm either going to drive it home or I'm going to rent a pickup and pull it or I don't know yet, but we're just going to go for it. So Ken's helping me drain the gas out with this wizardry machine here. Pretty slick. Compressor, full vacuum. We're going to dump it into this jug and then we'll be able to put some fresh gas back in it. So here's what's coming out and it smells nasty. There's just a tiny bit of particle in there, not a lot, which is great. So we might get away with just doing the old swapperoo. But yeah, that is, that's probably the most varnish I've seen actually. Well, we got about that much of the sewage gas out, which was really clean except for the last little bit. It was like, almost like a road tar came out. And then there was about three, maybe four gallons of this one, fresh, that we dumped in. Gage says eight gallons. That's, that's not right. But at least we know that's, you know, it is on an incline, but I don't think it should throw it off that much. But that's going to really help doing the Italian tune-up and whatnot here in the garage, having fresh gas in there already. So might have to use that wizard machine when I bleed the brakes up here. I'm going to get set up, get all the parts, and just get this knocked out quick, and then we'll move it on to the other side. I don't know what it is, but it feels like a guy only ever does wheel bearings. In fact, I just did some yesterday, I think. Yep, I did. Anywho, I got these bearings in, got the rotor on. Of course, you reuse the old cotter pin cap. You don't got to get fancy there. And I'm putting the old pad squeezers in. You got to go big. So I got Brake Best. Actually, it was just the cheapest. But 11 millimeter socket and a 3 8 Allen socket wrench thing. It's back here. And you want to grease on these too so they slide in and out easy. Is this grease that comes with it? Nope, keeper pin. You don't need that. What was I doing? I was putting this on. Oh, man. Oh, man. Is this the wrong size? This stuff is just crusty junk. Can't made me one of these Swedish goats. Comes in a fancy copper cup. And uh, it's tasty, it just quenches on you. It is so unbelievably hot here. I'm just, my boots are filling up. This garage is so nice. I don't know where to put my feet. I just, I'm having, I'm having a day. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. You know, a guy should have painted these like neon green or something. Apparently it gives you horsepower and stopping ability. Ah, torqued. Ceramic performance. Sure. They don't smell good. How do you know which one goes where? Do these both have the same flavor? No, nope, that one's got a hook doodab on it. And this one lays out here, like this. This side's all done. And to kind of reiterate, what you want to do is, if the car doesn't run or move yet, just buy the best parts from O'Reilly's and stick it on there, and then you kind of just hope that it's going to work. We'll get to this side, get that done, then we'll use the wizard machine and bleed on them. And this brake fluid looks nasty anyway, so we want to just snip that out of there. A little concerned because the brake pedal on the inside, she's just solid. But sometimes a little bit of yeah, yeah, from a size 13 will pop that loose and this fluid will shoot up. That seal on there sometimes doesn't tear in half. And other times it does. And when it does, you just ignore it and keep going. I could potentially swap on this though because these fittings... Don't look too rusted back here. 
so far everything's going you know we're getting there it's getting done This one might be down. Oh, well, this side looks worse. That's good. First thing I like to do under this rusty is you just gotta prepare them a little bit, you know, shake them up and get them ready. And I use my three pound Tanya Harding for that and just tickle it. Bottom. Maybe these little slider pins. They just get seized up in there. And that, once you get this in there, give her a couple whacks. And it should come around. Oh, this one just broke free with some horsepower. I don't know why they make cellular phones so darn big. You can't even sit down with them. <laughs> oh, got a message. understand I just ain't got no more wind just out of curiosity how do you guys pack your bearings up I kind of just uh, do mine by hand just throw all the old grease in here and work them in you use one of those fancy cup tool things or throw them in dry and pray or have you even seen some grease gun tricks out there I don't know Bleep bloop it down there. I'm just curious. Guy can always learn new tricks, you know. I'm not that old yet. Sure. Looks pretty good. Ready to go. Thank goodness these clouds are moving in. I am just sweating like a stuck pig. you got to teach them a lesson right out of the gate. Just get them seated. There we go. Then you can throw your washer on. I like to just max them all the way out until stuff is bending. And then I just back them off a skosh, jam the key in her and call it good. Just felt the seal go over the... There's bending mode. She passes. Jam some grease in here and then just, you know, bring it home. Brakes are going to be worth more than this car. Perfect. Well, a guy went to start bleeding on the brakes, and I'm getting no fluid up on the fronts, so I'm thinking I've got a stuck proportioning valve, which is way down there and basically impossible to reach. And there's a little slidey check valve doodab in there. When a guy jams on the brakes, it shuts down a little pressure to the rear wheels, so you don't get the slide or rooney. But when cars sit a long time like this, Sometimes those get stuck, yeah, and I think that's what I've got going on. And I'm gonna try to get it unstuck because replacing that is gonna be a bear. You can hit it with a stick or a hammer. You can also jam on the brake pedal. Some of them have a little reset button on the back, and well, that resets it. And there's some other various methods. So I'm gonna dink around with this for 94 days. Could be done, but no, of course. Slowly making progress. 
I loosened up that back one there and that swoops down to the uh, what is that the captain side front so I'm gonna tighten that back up now that I got fluid there and then see if I can get it out here and then we're making progress I'll do the same sometimes you just got to bust them open get some air in there and then you give the brake pedal about 914 pounds of force and it just shoots it through there got oil out of the back of the proportioning valve then had a hunch that maybe I had a collapsed line up here because that'll shut down pressure coming out or pressure will come out but not back went to test and so I guess we're just you know we're just gonna run all new brake lines that's that's fine that seems easy enough and I'm sure it's gonna be the same over here no use even trying to get that fitting off might as well just cut it and run all new stuff so got to run down to the Hardmore store and get pipe cutter and flare tool a bunch of line and fittings and great I had to drive around town for an hour but found the line that I need it goes in there like that and I'm just going to snip this off and try to flare on it get a fitting on it and that's close enough we're going to forego this bracketry, try to lighten the car up a little bit and just hook her right down into there and that should work. Got this side all finished up and then I installed a brake line rubbelator 200 delete which is just a piece of fuel line split over that and then zip tied her down and this is fine and gives you more ability to lay the camber out if you need to. You got more adjustability here, see. The other side's gonna look about the same. I haven't tested it yet because if that leaks, then I'm just gonna clamp it off. So we're just gonna say it works for now. And I think this is all done. Yep, sure, whatever that is. Got the brakes done, $11.4 million and two hours later, right back to where we were, which is fine. Uh, we're gonna try to bleed on it with that liquid sucker 400 wherever that went and Ken's out here he knows how to run it he'll turn the air compressor to max I think and see if we can get some juice through these get all this old brake fluid out hopefully well what is going on I just there we go all the back one's mowing dry that's new so must have sprung another leak somewhere like that one there operation half brakes seems to be working got about 62 percent pedal got a different plan on the tires and wheels now since i've got probably 700 bucks into this thing already i'm not going to put new tires on it tomorrow and instead doing some horse trading for these which are new used but they just went, I don't know, 500 miles or whatever, just fine. And we're gonna put these on there so it's not sitting out in this nice house on stands. And then Ken's gonna get new tires. So a lot of swapping around, but- And new rims. And new rims, yeah. But then they'll fit on here. These are 14s, 15s, same size tire technically. It'll ride just a little bit higher, but actually look a lot better with the rallies on here anyway than these things plus i'm down a trim ring you can't go around with three trim rings well i talked him into doing all the hard work out here swapping all the wheels so i just laid on the ground for about 20 minutes and then eventually cracked the pan oil looks actually really decent i'm gonna throw the old wicks in here and then run the old t4 really liking this stuff I don't know how many quarts it takes, so I'm just going to put a bunch in. And I'm going to put a, I got a belt for it here. I think that might be the right one. And if we get it running, I'm even going to try the AC. I put the old Adapter Rooney Kit 5000 on this cap. And I got one of those Resto kits. Already got the new battery. And probably figured it out by now but this is the 2.8 with the Rochester two barrel E2 I think they put out like 107.3 horsepower these guys 
and they had the 700 r4 overdrive transmission so they're gas sippers they cruise down the highway that's kind of what that's going to look like it's going to look pretty good i'm not going to use the other lug nuts because they have this like outer shell thing that just blows off that's the wrong one but they're basically junk ken's such a nice guy he's going to pick some up for me and big thank you to ken and his family they this is probably a worst case scenario for them they just put this beautiful home on the market and then we drag this third gen in here and just blow it apart and you know they're gonna have showings and here we go so i'm trying really hard to get this out of here tonight and some of you are probably thinking why are you why are you spending so much time and money on this car it's you know i realize it's not that desirable it's just a v6 or doesn't even have automatic windows but the guy that owned this car was a great guy and i wish you could have heard and seen the story in person and i know it's going to make the family really happy if i can get this thing running and on the road so that's the reason i'm going at it so hard good rig okay i think we're ready we've drained the old gas put new gas in changed the oil Check the coolant, put a new battery in her, put a new belt on it, fix the brakes, check the trans oil, which is pretty skunky, but I got some, I don't know, there's something in a blue bottle that was cheaper than Lucas. Yeah, and I think, uh, I don't know, I'm just going to twist on it and see what happens. It fired last time. I'm just, I couldn't believe it. I walked around here mumbling for a while because this has legitimately been sitting for 27 years now. So we'll just see what happens. Give her some laughing gas. Do you have a fire extinguisher? Yeah, right. Oh, good. Oops, keys. Oh, there they are. Hey, Bert. Zero dash lights, no service engine lights. Oh, doesn't like throttle. Maybe just let it sit for a minute. noise is the Cadillac converter and the exhaust is literally just blowing into pieces. I'll go back there and show you. It started idling smoother. work. No engine 
engine lights, nothing. Transmission's empty. Doing this idle surging a little bit. Probably still trying to figure things out. One more thing just for fun, because it's about 700 degrees Celsius here. I'm gonna throw this in and see if the AC even works. Pump hasn't turned on yet. There it went. This is crazy. It's slowly getting better. Guess we'll check the transmission, see what happens. Might be a little low still. Well, I made it to about not so much here. Oh, you can see by the muffler debris blowing out. I made it to here and uh, I lost reverse. Not a gear. I think the linkage is just the linkage is just unhooked. I mean, when I, when I do this, I got nothing. So I'm gonna take this off first. I hope it just came unhooked there. It's not a snap cable or something else. All right, I am just around the corner from the house. This Cadillac converter is obnoxious. I'm starting to think that's the reason it was parked. I'm just hoping it's not plugged. If it is, we'll just snip it off, you know. As far as a test drive, I'm testing it straight to my motel to get some sleep. And then tomorrow when we can see what the heck is going on, we'll uh, actually give it a test. Do I got lights in here? What is, I don't know if this is helping the video or I don't know at this juncture. It's just, it is what it is, folks. We got a slip slide in the second gear. I can't see nothing with this lead light in my face, but we'll just keep going with it. They got speed bumps the size of semi trailers in this neighborhood. Yeah, I can't. She's she needs some trans juice. Just slipping. Oh, I got stuff just sliding around in here. It seems to be running okay. The speedometer works. I got it. I gotta turn this light off, I think, fellers. It's just, it's not good. I'm gonna focus on driving. I'll get back to you in a minute. Made her to the gas station, about a mile away. I don't know if you can see this, but she's just, she's smoking. Let's see if I can figure out what's going on here. Probably just, I don't, you know, I just, I don't know. And it's too dark to see anything, so we're just gonna pretend we didn't see the smoke, I think. And we'll just deal with that tomorrow. I'm gonna throw some fresh gasoline in her. I got some 92 here. And then I'm gonna shoot over to oh, 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 advanced. I don't think that's right, but are they open? I think they are. Get some transmission juice for tomorrow. 
and my motel is literally just right there so I'll hit you guys up in the morning and we'll go from there Hey, good morning. Car took about 28 minutes to go 96 feet over to here, so that's good. I'm feeling great though. I got a couple hours of sleep and I'm just firing on all seven this morning. We got just under 800 miles to go. Correction, just over 800. I gotta make a detour, grab some cassette tapes and Axe body spray. Just feels right. I think this morning I'm going to start off with the old Italian tune-up. Just didn't feel right late last night in that nice neighborhood. I could just hear the property value just, you know. And then I got to deal with the Slipomatic. It's supposed to be an overdrive, but it kind of just wanders around. I'm hoping she's just still low on fluid, but it's not. And then we're just going to send it I guess you know it's never going to be 750 then 700 then 650 if we don't just go is there anything else oh plugs wires air cleaner we'll just see what the Italian tune-up rejuvenates I can't even get my arms in there anyway so it's not like I'm really going to do it I mean I'll probably have to but Here's the thing, I'm out of clothes. I got my Sunday vest on. I just, I can't be flopping on the ground today. I can't. Just pulled some leaves out of the carburetor. Well, we'll see if she fires up and barks at us. We'll just dump this down. This should clean up the intake valves, and I'm hoping cleans the plugs good enough to, you know, just forget about changing them. Bring the thunder. Well, where'd the keys go? Yeah, this again. It's just, it's not happy. Well, the Italian won the boxing match. It's just, it's not, this isn't, it's not good. Well, the guy's just gonna hook his peepers on this thing and see if I can figure out what's going on. Well, I found it. Never seen this before. Somehow, the front California sensor just blew right out of the manifold and I'm about 104% positive that that is not going to come out of that manifold. There is no way. And if I start heating and putting juice on it and breaker bars, I'm going to crack the manifold. And then I'm never getting home. So, we can do some wiring magic or some MacGyver stuff. I'm actually relatively close to a parts store. It's 
It's just yonder, right over that hill. I wonder if I could nurse it down there. And then we'll tinker on it. I'm gonna keep it 68 and 32 with you. This isn't looking so hot, but I just, I can't give up. It's just not in my blood. You know, we'll just, we'll just keep taking her on the chin. And we'll get there. I think a guy might get in here and wipe this dash down just a hair. A lot of that stuff's probably just gonna come right back up in my teeth. And I got this headliner issue. I already don't fit in here. I'm just, I'm slouched and I got the seat back in Tupac mode, but I just, I ain't got no room for my capillator and it's not very comfortable. The good news is the brakes work excellent now. Well, I basically just rebuilt this whole car in the parking lot. Put some more uh, Berryman's in here and I bought like six or seven bottles. So every stop, I'll just dump some more in and that'll clean up the digitals up here, hopefully, and the carburetor. And then I fixed this the right way. I got some uh, muffler tape and, you know, it feels pretty wiggly, so it probably won't work. But we'll, we'll run it, see what happens. And then I did a little bit of factormizing. Got to ride in comfort. Got this wheel just dialed right in. This is a about 92 horsepower, comfort level 11. Bought a cigarette lighter, plug in adapter thingy for my telephone, doesn't work. I was down here looking for a fuse and look what I found. I'll be dipped. I was bummed she don't have crews up on the stick, but maybe she's got it after all. No idea if it works, probably not, but we'll try it. And then I put some Freshomatic 200s in here. I got four of them in here, which is way too much. Perfect. Returned a bunch of parts. Uh, dumped my oil out. So I think I'm ready to rock. Got my Tanya Harding, some coolant. Oh, what the oil? I had to pick up a spray gun at Harbor Freight. It's on sale for 10 bucks. This is empty, so that'll work good. I got one quart in already. I'm gonna let her chew on that for a minute. Then we'll check on it again and just hope, I guess. It sure is running though. Hopefully getting out on the highway just blows the cobwebs out of her. All right, here we go. Let's see if it shifts better. Nope. Hey, third gear. One to two is really bad. Two to three is no overdrive yet. Still no overdrive, doing 40. Oh, I hope I have overdrive. There it went. Okay, so it's got all the gears, but she's just, you know, a little slow shifting. I got a red light here, we'll try it again. I think the gas gauge is actually working because when a guy brakes, she tilts down and back up. Kind of a funky gauge. It just has gallons and litres. All right. One to two. It's really bad. Two to three is slow. Down shifts. So that could be three things, sticky valves, or it's bands, could be a TV cable adjustment that's needed, but this guy was really, oh, there's overdrive big time. Sure, throw it in at 30, why not? But anywho, this guy sounded really meticulous, so I don't think he'd back her in with the TV cable being incorrect. So I think we're just going to just jump right on the interstate, dig her into the overdrive, try to get some miles under the belt, and see if she rejuvenates. I got some Transmedic 9000 Jack Hawk X-Ray TXL in there. I don't know, I never saw it before. It was blue. Maybe that'll do something. My first stop is uh, 100 and 
59 miles. We gotta go get some cassette tapes. Well, don't be mad at me. I'm going the limit. Anyway, we gotta get some cassette tapes. We gotta have some tunes, that's important. And I'm going severely out of my way to do so. Let's get on the interstate and just see what happens, I guess. The roads are just really good in Kentucky. I can't see nothing. But it does look cool. There's overdrive. I mean, it sinks that really good. As long as we got park and overdrive, I'm fine. I'm gonna say it goes straight. I mean, the roads here are like this. So you can't really judge that. No shakes in the wheel. The tires are vibrating severely, but that's the unbalanced tires from 1992 that we just took off that Chevelle that also shook my teeth out driving the Chevelle from Pennsylvania. I was gonna buy new tires, but after we put $800 million in the brakes and everything else, I figured we'd skip that. Hey, I'm passing people. I think we're set. Oh, cruise control. Where's this thing? Okay. On? Or what's that say? Off. Is the opposite on? Must be. Okay. Set? Nothing. I mean, it's really hot when I touch it. No. It ain't doing nothing. I want to start a fire. Well, I think if something's going to break, it's going to be the transmission so far. Oh, do I got AC still? <laughs> oh, I want my shirt. There's just, this must be the blower motor seal. It's just blowing right into my back neck. straight up to Chicago. I'm in uh, Jamestown, Indiana. 
which appears to be nothing but a giant metal building here to make it something. Anywho, I uh, snipped off the road. I got to pick up a cassette tape so I can have some tunes. No idea if it works, so definitely worth the side trip. Good news is, even though the check engine light's on, the car seems to be running better. The transmission is still a centrifugal clutch. It just kind of wanders around, but engine's coming around. Oh, light went off. Everything's fine again. I'm about to bottle your mind up. Completely worth the trip. Look at this. What is this thing? Oldies. There's so many tapes in here. Bee Gees, Crows, Johnny Cash, The Eagles, Eddie and the Cruisers, Kenny Loggins. He has more than one tape? Don't be dipped. This right here is actually fairly hard to find. And these are too deep. Meatloaf. I better get that one ready. Metallica 1. U2. Batman. Beach Boys, Radiohead, Elvis. I got this, you know, there's about a little bit of everything in here. And I'm just, I'm liking it a lot. Cult, better get that ready. I can actually feel my mullet getting longer. It's just, it's tickling right now. That's a speed wagon down here. Rock in the 60s. Prince. Kiss. Super Tramp, oh my goodness. I just, I can't breathe, I'm getting so excited here. I'll report back in a bit and let you know if the tape player works. Go in here and snip me up some wiper blades. It's rained on me about 38 times, but thankfully only for a minute or two at a time. That's a whole lot better. Only charging me like five bucks a piece for those. Originally an Oddfellows building. Uh, rebuilt in 1910 the guy said really cool inside and then he gave me directions down this highway here There's a watering hole down there. I can get a hamburger and a cold snack And then since we're you know an eighth of the way in I guess we just keep on trucking This feels right about having the B-52s just ripping on the cassette player and a Camaro. Just filled up if I'm doing the numbers right on my number machine on the phone here. Getting about 22, almost 23 miles to the gallon. I'll be dipped. So that means I can go about 350 some odd miles a tank. So I got my foot mashed all the way through the firewall. We're just gonna, I don't know if you can hear that alternator belt just ripping in the wind out there. She stretched out, giving me a fuss, but I think I'm just gonna go until this one blows off, because I got the old one that's 30 years old in the back. I got about 570 miles left. That seems normal. Ooh, 1086 International. Pulled off to snip down to this Napa. I gotta work on this belt and the engine keeps quitting. It just quit again. I'm just coastal late in here. I got a, how far to the Napa store? I ain't gonna make it. 0.7 miles. Dang it. It's running really rough. I wonder if that O2 sensor sprung out of there again. smells like burnt Indian food which is usually fine um, this is fairly tight actually I might just get some anti-slip juice 
I can't believe these haven't blown off yet. I mean, those are more crumbly than that Kansas song. Oh, yep. The old uh, muffler tape fix. Well, it just, it didn't make it. So, I'm gonna go inside. I did coast into the Napa. I don't even know what town, oh my goodness. I don't know if you can see that. There's a bunch of old cars back there. Anyway, oh, there we go. Remington? So I'm gonna mosey in here and see if I can find something to cobble that back down in there again. What else do I need? Nothing, just keep rolling. A little bit of a leak on the water neck. Oh, that just flops. And that seems normal. Well, I don't have a bottle torch. So I just held this little lion here at 5,000 RPM until she got good and hot. And then I used nothing but my back and I was able to break that loose, that little devil. I just can't believe it. So now I'll go back inside and see if they even have one of these. Probably not. Well, status report. Car is running worse with the new O2. They even reset the battery on her. I can't get her to idle. We'll just rev on it like it's a Z28, you know, scare the Mustang guys away. No, not really. What is that now? I don't know what's happening anymore. Uh, I did put some more refrigerant in her because I'm just melting. I had to change my shirt. It does leak. Hopefully it'll get me till sundown. <laughs> and, uh, oh, that's, you know, we're just going to keep going. Everything seems just normal. Yeah. It's fine. What's on fire? Dang it. I think it just needs more throttle, is what it's trying to tell me. You can't just baby these things. You gotta drive them. There we go. Coming through. Whatever this dash noise is, is fairly obnoxious. fire department. Wow. <laughs> oh, there's that nice trans slip. Sure is a nice day. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Guy finally lost his AC belt, but the sun's been hiding, it's been raining on and off. I think this is all that's left of her. Right there. That's okay. This rain's been tough. These tires are just, you know, they're not what you would call good. So 55, 60, she starts doing the old that thing. Squeezed in about nine and a half gallons, so must have another 180, 190 miles down. So that puts me at about 300 and 
350, I don't know. There's math. 330, let's go with 342 left. Uh, idle issues started to come out of it. I think she just had to get acquainted with the new O2 up front here. Everything else is looking pretty good. Checked on the oil, it's still full. It's not getting hot. We just keep grinding away. Should be the last fill up 67 miles left i might have made her but just it's too close and i'm really tired to be messing around with running out of gas so one more fill up and then we're gonna make her digicals on it like this it just makes the bush fixes a lot harder to do works great when they actually run but I am surprised this transmission held up <laughs> of course Are you kidding me come on well, I might be walking the last couple miles. Oh, a guy made her in about 1.30 this morning. I kind of just plopped out of the car and low crawled into the house. Last night after I took that corner just a couple blocks down, she blew the old charging whirler belt, but I knew I had another belt on the water pump. I only had about a mile to go. So I just ran her home on the bath tree and we made her in. The lights were really dim by the time we got here, but other than that, she did pretty dang good. Whoa, whoa, settle down. Didn't use lick of oil. Doesn't smoke. I mean, pretty good little V6 actually. But now the fun part is, what do I do with this thing? Do I? Restore it to original to try to find the original wheels on it, tires, V8, swap it. I don't know. You guys let me know. I'm going to load it up today, haul it over to the Wisconsin shop, drop it off, and wait for your guys' suggestions. Pretty amazing this thing made it. Untested, unseen, 27 years and almost 800 miles. And it did pretty dang good. Thanks guys for watching, appreciate it very much. If you're not subscribed, please do that. Hit that little bell thing down there too. 
and we'll see you next time.